Let's go back then to the first item under configure and that's the system. Now the reason why you want to look at this is because there's a number of settings that you need to take care of before you start to join your access points and create your WLANs and have your users connect. First is the system settings and this is the name of the zone director and if you remember this was created during the setup so I'm just going to change that name now to RAZDA200 because it might be something that's a little bit more appropriate and of course what we have to do now is to hit apply for that change to be saved. Now this address that we're looking at here which is the zone director IP address this is the address that the access points will connect to but we can have a separate IP address for management and there may be some good reasons for doing that for example your management may be from a different VLAN or it could be that you want to have smart redundancy which we'll look at later on where we have two zone directors connected together and you want to have them available on the same address so I'll leave that blank until we talk about smart redundancy let's take a moment then to consider what's actually happening to the physical interfaces on the zone director 1200 as you can see there are two interfaces physically on the front of the zone director and when you first connect up the interface address that you specify which is this 192.168.1201 that I've used in my example this is the interface that we use for management but it's also the interface address that the access points will connect in on and they are both one and the same interface when we've only got a single uh, cable connected if we specify a separate management interface that will appear on the same physical network port as well so what happens when we plug in a second network cable well really all of those services will be then available on the second network port now it's not lagging what this really is is a redundancy option so if we do lose a connection to one of those network cables then all of the services become available on the second network cable so I just want to point this out because I don't want you to get confused between the different management interface and the IP4 configuration whether they're going to be on separate interfaces or not what we're really looking at is one address IP4 configuration can be used for management but also for the access points to connect however if we want to specify a secondary management interface address we can do that but the access points will continue to connect up using that original IP4 address if we need to add any static routes to allow connections to and from the zone director then we can do that here and here is whether we are going to enable smart redundancy and again on smart redundancy we can select um, the IP address of the zone director that we're going to connect to but of course here we don't see a management IP address because we haven't configured it up here and if we did configure that again I mentioned we'll look at this a bit later we can uh, access two different zone directors from the, from the same management IP address now the DHCP server is really only available or really only recommended for use for small networks and even then it's not perhaps a great idea really just for testing and the reason for that is because we've only got one range that we can actually allocate IP addresses from so it will get you out of trouble in a in an emergency when you need to get some IP addresses out there but really for production you need to be thinking of an external DHCP server and that's what we've got on the local network here so I won't enable this now because we don't want to have a clash now DHCP option 43 allows layer 3 discovery for access points that join the zone director so bear that in mind when we look a little bit later on at access point discovery and registration if we want to have access to the zone director only from specific locations then we can select here the management access control and this is a good way to ensure that you're only accepting connections from known places so just make your zone director a little bit less visible so we can create a new management IP address here of course if you're going to do this make sure that you are still within that range or within that IP address that you can connect on so you don't lock yourself out so I'll just cancel that the system time by default we will pick up our system time from ntp.ruckus wireless I'm actually recording this in the United Kingdom so we can see our time zone is set to GMT and we'll automatically pick up any daylight saving uh, time changes 
country code well we saw this when we did our setup that the country code is set to the United States now you may ask why am I recording this in the United Kingdom showing the United States that's fine I just happen to be located here but of course we default all of our training back to a sort of United States centric viewpoint so uh, in reality of course I should really set this to United Kingdom but because we're showing the United States way of doing things then I set my country code to the United States now we do have a few options here for channel optimization. Now, if we did set this to a different country code, for example, we don't see those optimizations. And so let's set back to the United States. And this is all to do with how the channels behave. And again, it's quite an advanced subject. So we're not going to cover that in this training. But this is something that if you're a really advanced, um, super detailed Wi Fi engineer and you need to make some configuration changes, this perhaps could be something that you want to look into. Logging will specify how much information actually gets posted into the event log. One thing you have to bear in mind is that the zone director has a fixed capacity for the event log and at a certain level the zone director will start to delete the oldest entries to make room for the newest and the log is also volatile which means that if the zone director is powered down the log will be flushed. If we want to use remote syslog to have those events posted off to a syslog server options for syslog I won't go into that if you're using syslog you'll know what those settings are anyway now the email server is the email service that we'd like to use if we are going to email off the uh, events to an admin but also if we want to email out our guest passes so if we're going to use an email server here and use guest passes as well then we need to select an email address that's going to be kind of compatible with both of those functions okay SMS now we can add SMS and this is purely for the delivery of guest passes two accounts right now are supported Twilio and Clickertel so if you talk to those guys and set up an account you will be able once you select guest passes to deliver them via the SMS server okay here is a login warning when you log into the zone direct for the first time you can put a warning up there Now this may seem like a strange thing to do but if somebody does attempt to access your zone director without permission and you have a warning there and they read that then you can imply that they're willfully trying to break in so this could be part of a security strategy the wording that's within this warning could actually be relevant and legally defensible as well you saw the map in the dashboard and we've got the option to use either a Google map or a Bing map the default is Google and that's what we've got so we leave it at that choice but if you are comfortable using Bing maps then you do have the option to switch over finally network management we can decide whether we're going to enable SNMP traps of course we need the SNMP server we can use SNMP 2 or SNMP 3 bear in mind that SNMP 2 is not regarded as secure so SNMP 3 would be the preferable option if you're going to choose to use SNMP and we'll then go back down here finally whether we're going to allow Telnet server for remote connections to the zone director so that is a quick overview of the settings that are under system but don't forget there's some other configuration options too that also relate to the system that's the alarm settings WIPs certificate and location services so check out the other video where I'll be covering those mm -hmm.